Now we're going to take a slightly more uh, sophisticated look at what actually happens when we try to compute probabilities from language models. So we're going to try to answer the question of where these probabilities come from. And these models, again, place distributions over the next word given words that, that came before. And we're not going to look at how ChatGPT does this. We'll talk about this very briefly a little bit later. Instead, we're going to look at a much simpler model, which is called a two-gram language model or a bigram language model. And what this model does is it's going to think about the probability of each word in a sentence conditioned only on the word that comes before. And I'm going to explain what that means. But basically, it's a simple model where we're going to try to do our predictive text operation based only on the previous word. Now, what is this idea of conditional probability? So we're going to write things that look like this. P, or probability, of next word equals Y given previous word equals X. And what that reads as is it defines a number, which is the probability that the next word is Y, assuming that we just saw X in the sentence. So an example of this is I could say the probability of the next word equals Austin, given the previous word equals 2, is 0 0.2. And what that's saying is, is, from a predictive text standpoint, if we see two, I think there's a 20% chance that the next word is Austin. And I just made up this probability. We're going to talk about where these come from in a minute, but for right now, I'm just making these up. And so I'm going to make up probabilities for all the other words as well. And again, you know, a lot of things are going to have some small probability under this model, and they all have to add up to one over the vocabulary, over every possible word that y could be. So given that we see the word two, we need to fully specify, like for every single word, what is the probability of it coming next? These probabilities are actually enough to give us a predictive text system. Because if I'm in this situation on my phone where I've typed the word two, then essentially what we want to do is we want to look at the probability that the next word equals whatever, given that the previous word equals two. And the way we might implement this is we check all the words from our word list or our vocabulary, and we pick the ones with the highest probability to show on the screen here, C, get, and B. All right, so the last piece that we're missing is where these probabilities actually come from. And here we're going to talk about how we learn them from text data. So essentially, our process here is we have a lot of text that we've seen. Maybe on your phone, you can imagine your phone knows about a lot of stuff that other people have typed, but then also everything you've ever typed on it, right? And it's going to estimate a set of two gram language model probabilities, which are then going to allow us to do this kind of prediction. So this step of getting those probabilities is what we need to talk about. And in order to do that, we're going to need to see a very basic kind of machine learning, which is trying to figure out the probability of something based on seeing instances of it. Now, this is nice in that it doesn't involve any calculus, but it's still a little bit tricky in some sense. So we're going to look through an example here. Suppose we have a biased coin that's heads with probability P. P is a number between 0 and 1. So for a normal coin, we would say P equals 0.5. But if p is not 0.5, maybe the coin is weighted in some way. Maybe it comes up heads with, with you know, 80% of the time. And suppose we flip the coin four times and we see heads, 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 tails. I want you to try to guess what is the probability of heads with this coin. This is a little bit of a tricky question, but I'm going to let you pause and think about this. OK, the reason I said that this is a tricky question is because we don't really know what p is. And p could very well still be 0.5, right? If you flip a coin four times, you can get three heads very easily. But if you said that p was 3 quarters because we saw three heads out of four trials, what you were doing was something called maximum likelihood estimation, which is a very fancy way uh, of figuring out what this probability is. Uh, and it's very deeply sort of the right thing here, because 
we saw three heads out of four trials, the most likely thing is that P was three, three out of four. And the reason is because we can actually think about what was the probability of seeing these outcomes. It was P times P times P times one minus P um, because it was three heads and then one tail. And that actually gives us a function defined in terms of P. And if you use calculus, you can find that that function is maximized at P equals 0 0.75. So you don't need to worry about any of that. Right now, what I want you to take away from this is if we see three heads out of four trials, we get three out of four. We get 0 0.75. We can go with that simple intuition, um, but it's actually really the right thing from a machine learning standpoint as well. All right, so let's come back to our language modeling case. Our language model actually has kind of the same idea, although it's now dressed up in a much more complicated framework because we have a lot more possible outcomes and we have to think about this idea of conditional probability. So again, let's think about the probability of the next word given that the previous word was two. Now, in order to figure this out, we actually only want to look at words that follow the word two. So if we, here's our, in this box, I've put some data for us to learn probabilities from. I like to eat cake, but I want to eat pizza right now. Mary told her brother to eat pizza too. Now, I claim that you can give me a guess as to what the probability of the next word equals pizza is, given that the previous word equals eat. Or the probability that the next word equals cake is, given that the previous word equals eat. And the way that you can do this is go through and count up Okay, if we see eat three times, how many times was it followed by pizza? Well, we see two, right? So just like in the flipping the coin thing, we get a probability of two thirds. Out of three times that we saw pizza, out of three times we saw eat, two of them were followed by pizza, and then one of them was followed by cake. And everything else has probability zero. So we can write this probability in a slightly more fancy abstract way by saying the probability of the word given the previous word is the count of that pair divided by the count of the previous word. That is how many times did we see w prev followed by w versus how many times did we see w prev. And this is a uh, set of numbers that we're going to call the parameters of the model. And we're going to come back to these later in the context of ChatGPT, but these are what allow the model to make its predictions. Now, one slight tricky thing to make this actually work in practice is that when you see only a small amount of data, assigning every other word other than pizza and cake to have zero probability is somehow not the right thing to do. So instead, what we do is we apply something called smoothing where we're going to make sure that every word has a non-zero probability. And we do that by way of this somewhat complicated looking formula. Uh, we're going to break it down here. We say that the probability of w given w prev is lambda times this count of w prev comma w over count of w prev. So that's just what we had before. And then we add 1 minus lambda times uh, the count of w over the total number of words that we see. And this is what we call a unigram or one gram language model. It's just the frequency of each word in the data. And then this lambda thing is a number between 0 and 1. And what this does is it controls the trade-off between these two terms. Notice that if it's set to 0, we won't get the first term at all and we'll get the second term. If it's set to 1, we'll get only the first term and not the second term. So if you set it to something like 0.9, you'll get mostly the first term, but you'll kind of average it a little bit with what comes from the second term. So if you're doing the programming exercise, uh, it involves basically these steps, reading in a bunch of text data, storing the counts of the word pairs in the individual words, computing the probabilities, and then predicting the next word or sampling the rest of the sentence. And that's the part that you're going to be uh, kind of specifically working on. Uh, there's some written exercises that you can see to kind of test out these concepts. They're in a linked worksheet. That's the end of the segment.